story that many of you already know yes. and that none of you will ever forget. <laughs> this is a tale of how I became the man that I am today. <laughs> the year was two, two summers ago. <laughs> so we went out to Colorado where my brother at the time was staying in an apartment in a little town called Greeley. And a little ways, a few blocks from his apartment was this park, right? And one absolutely beautiful morning, I woke up right when the sun rose. Everyone in the house, or everyone in the apartment was still asleep, um, and I decide, I'm gonna go out and be healthy. It's a beautiful day, and I'm gonna go see the rest of the world. But, whenever I have been woken up by the sun, seems to be an omen of death in my life. <laughs> Something catastrophic always follows. So I get up, I sneak out of the house so I don't disturb anyone because I'm very caring for my family. And I know. <laughs> so I go out and I'm walking through the park. There's no one there, it's a nice cool morning, it's, there's not a cloud in the sky, it's a beautiful day. And I'm walking on a sidewalk, whistling a little song to myself, just enjoying my day. And about two feet that direction from me is a goose. <laughs> and this goose is sitting, just squatting on the ground, right? And I'm like, I'm the human in this situation. I do not need to veer out of the way of this goose. I could eat you if I wanted to. <laughs> so I continue on my straight line path through the sidewalk, not thinking that anything's gonna happen. So I get a little closer to the goose, and the goose snaps its head towards me <laughs> and opens its mouth and lets out a <laughs> a very short, curt hiss that was meant for nothing but disrespect in my mind. <laughs> and me being the complete idiot that I am, I look at the goose, lock eyes with its cold, cold black eyes, and I go like... <laughs> A decision I would later regret. <laughs> so the goose, while maintaining eye contact with me, it was reading my soul, I tell you. It just like... <laughs> it rises. As soon as this happens, I know that I've made a mistake and I... <laughs> I, keep in mind, there is no one in this park. I am completely by myself. I, look, I, I then vocalize to myself, uh-oh. <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, maybe I can handle this like a bear, you know? You just like back away and then it'll just leave you alone. But no, I take one step back and it takes one step forward. <laughs> and as it, as it left the grass and came onto the pavement, it got even worse. It, it's flippers flapping on the pavement. It sounded like slapping a slice of cheese onto a table. Every single time. My slow back up to try and get away from this goose slowly starts getting faster and faster until it breaks into a full on sprint. And to this day, 17 years of my life, I have never run this fast, <laughs> ever. I have never moved this fast, inside or outside of a vehicle. <laughs> so, very quickly into this absolute goose chase, if you will. <laughs> I realize I only have two options. Either I continue running until I die, <laughs> or I try and turn around and kick this goose into the next time zone. <laughs> I decide to go with the latter. 
because I enjoy living. So my plan was that I was going to like plant my right foot, use my momentum of running, and kick the goose, right? But I did not correctly estimate how close the goose was. <laughs> I plant my right foot, prepping for the kick of the century. And as soon as I plant my foot, this goose plants itself into my calf. And with a squawk, it locked onto my leg. And of course, you know, me being a human, I'm like, ow. I'm actually soft serving that big time. I was like, human instinct was to then reach down and grab the goose by the neck. At which point it lets go because there's a human hand around its neck. And it, at, because it lets go, I can like hold it out and I like bring it up, right? And I'm looking at it. And it's like kind of looking at me, but it's like not really because its head is kind of like. <laughs> and it's, its body hanging below is kind of doing the same thing. And its wings are like flapping, and its feet are like air running. It was like when you hold a dog and it thinks it's swimming in the air, but like way faster. And. It's trying to honk because it's in a lot of distress, but my hand's around its throat. So instead of a it's like a So So I am I am freaking out. Because I know if I let go, I am a dead man. And on my tombstone will be written, eaten by a goose. <laughs> so I, I'm holding this thing like full arm extension, like, what do I do? What do I do? And in its huff of flailing and disgruntled, like, honking, its body moved in a certain way, and its head moved in a certain way. And I feel a snap. <laughs> and, and the goose, the goose goes from a very lively state <laughs> to the exact opposite. From flapping every which way, just <laughs> and its head like fell over my hand. <laughs> and so now I'm freaking out even more. Because not only do I have a goose in my hand, I have a deceased goose in my hand. I have a corpse in my grasp. What do you do? Why? So now. I'm especially freaking out. I'm looking around every which direction like, what, what do I do? What do I do? I, uh, because ah, ah, I'm like, I'm thinking like, okay, someone's probably going to come and now see me and that would be a problem. So I look around and I see a bush, a very thick bush. And without even thinking twice, I grab its feet and I go, one, two, three! And with one swell foop, it goes into the bush, rustles, pats on the ground, and it's gone. I, at this point, I thought it was over. But I then hear, 
clapping and cheering <laughs> coming from a nearby gazebo. Which was the most jubilant cheer I have ever heard. Y'all are really happy people. Nothing I have heard this whole week compares to this one dude. I, his, his name was Brian. He was a homeless guy who was living in this park. And I, I go over because I'm like, uh-oh, I'm probably going to die now. And I walk over to him and I'm like, hey man, you're not going to call the cops, right? And he's like, dude, I live in this gazebo. You think I have a phone? <laughs> And Brian is actually a very nice guy. I need to go check up on him. He, he described to me how this goose had been terrorizing the park for some time. He'd been hissing and flapping and flapping and, and honking at everyone who walked by just, be, just because they were walking. And he thanked me for saving this park from this absolute monster that was this goose. I then left my quality time with Brian, and I went back to the apartment, I closed the door quietly, and I go into the kitchen. Everyone's still asleep, and I pour myself a heaping bowl of Lucky Charms, <laughs> acting like nothing had ever happened. And to this day, to this day I tell you, no one in my family knows that this happened. 